What's up everybody? My name is Elliot and welcome to another episode of Other People's Cars. If you aren't familiar with this series, it's where I take a look at cars that are not mine and take a look at how a normal person owns them while paying special attention to the personal items inside of each car. Now today we have a 2007 Chevrolet Impala, or as most people would know it, every rental car from 2004 and up. This car is powered by a 211 horsepower three and a half liter V6, but beyond that, who really cares? It's a front wheel drive, four door sedan that you see at least 25 of every single day. But let's take a closer look at how this particular car has held up over the last 13 years and see what kind of interesting stuff we find inside. Okay, so first and foremost, let's take a look around the outside of this Impala and see the general condition that it's in. Walking around, doesn't look too bad, kind of like the Civic, white paint just doesn't show very much. The paint is dirty. It definitely has that gritty texture to it. Moving around back, we can see that the once gold Chevrolet logo is now sun faded and what looks like more than one rear incident here. That is uh, some flaky paint. Kind of par for the course for these cars. You could describe this color as an eggshell white and with these cracks and texture, it's really bringing the egg out of that eggshell. Another little funny spot here is this little like burnt spot. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's rust beginning to form, but it kind of looks like a cigarette burn. It's a weird place to put out a cigarette. Moving around to the side, it's kind of more of the same. Wheels are in okay condition. We've got the world's biggest piece of bird poop right here. That bird definitely ate his fiber that day. Actually, maybe he didn't eat his fiber. That's pretty runny. Either way, points for distance. That's good. Up front, you got your typical clouded headlights and some more impact signs. What's cool about this one is it kind of looks like a dragon taking a bite out of this section of the grill. Chomp, chomp. But it is spider flaked paint all the way across. Again, really keeping with that whole eggshell theme, except for this one has the whole dragon angle. Some more paint flakage here and here. Overall, the outside of this car is pretty par for the course for something that's outside 24 seven and is 13 years old. It's gonna have a few dings and scratches and paint flaking off, that's typical. So let's take a look at the inside and see what that's all about. All right, let's start off on the driver's side. Oh, good. Before I even get in though, this looks like it has just been kicked to all heck. It just looks like everybody ever has scuffed this. This portion here is supposed to be this color, but it is absolutely black with scuffs, which is fine. That's what it's for. It's a kick plate. Driver's compartment, again, I'm not sure if that's coming out on camera. You can see what color it could be is up there and what color it is, is down here. And the texture of this, I can only describe as like charcoal. It's got like a, a shine to it. That's very interesting. The interior door panel here is absolutely stuffed to the brim with receipts and wrappers. I mean, wow. This is, this is, this is a lot. It feels like a trash compactor, how slammed in this stuff is. Wow, look at that. I'll obviously pick that up. Looking around, you've got very, very basic instrumentation. Tack, speedo, water temp, gas. That's all you get. Very, very nice fake wood, but it's in good condition. It's actually not cracked from the heat, which is great. He looks like he's got a braided auxiliary cord and an iPhone connector. That's good. Uh, in this center portion here, we've got uh, the a lid and we've got a huge bottle of cologne. Michael Kors cologne. Let's see. Ooh, smells great though. But at this quantity, I have to wonder if the owner of this car either smells bad or just likes to mask himself before he goes into places. Who knows, but not a bad scent. Good choice. Got a comb, another comb. Wow, that's a Real wood comb, that's kind of cool. Antibiotic ointment. Uh, hopefully there's nothing I need that for in here. Receipt, car charger, Sharpie pen, you never know. Ah, a Voodoo Ranger IPA coaster. A little uh, baggie with some spare buttons. That's always nice. And then what's, what's this? Hey, a half dollar, 1971. Let's see what's in the center console. Napkins, like a whole bunch of them. Look at this. This is like $20 worth of change in here. I'm grabbing like handfuls of it. That's, that's crazy. For you younger viewers out there, that used to be a viable form of currency. And they used to give you extra change when you paid over with what were called dollars. But those are relics of a time past. Uh, let's see here. Oh, look. 
a whole iPhone. That's that's always good. Looks to be in okay condition too. All right, let's move over to the passenger side and see what we can see over there. All right, first and foremost, we've got a can of Deep Woods Off. Nice to have this time of year. Underneath the seat, we are stuffed with straw wrappers. We've got the same kick panel thing going on here. Just an absolute wad of leaves in this crevice here. And the start of a felony forest. We've also got a McDonald's bag from who knows how long ago, old enough that the grease has set in. A water bottle, Gatorade, gross. Empty Tupperware with a little fishy on it. That's kind of... Napkins, mask, and a rogue fry. Probably toss this fry out so, I don't know, bugs can eat it. Now, let's take a look in the glove box. Huh. Surprisingly, not much. Actually, nothing. All necessary information. Rare. I would have thought that that would have had a lot more in it. All right, let's move along to the back seat of this car. Oh man, yeah, this is good stuff. All right, so we've got a Tasmanian Devil Looney Tunes uh, button-up shirt. Man, this thing's this thing's snazzy. I kind of need. I'm gonna put this on for the rest of the review. Hang on, that's a good-looking shirt. Call me Doug Demiro. I'm gonna do in this review with two shirts on for the rest of the time. All right, we've got a bucket of cat litter. It seems to be empty. Shoes, pants, I guess. Another thing of cat litter. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm a huge fan of cats, so this must mean the owner of this car has one or more cats, which is cool. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We've got a bag full of disc golf items, fishing line. Let's see what we got here. Oh, off-brand Tylenol PM. This is probably for after he's done disc golfing, I would guess. You're sore, but you also want to go to sleep. Tylenol PM. Water bottle, plastic trim piece that goes who knows where. We've got another water bottle, napkins, jumper cables, alcohol bottle, spare change, screwdriver, some assorted tools, some oil, which makes me assume this car burns a, a little bit. Of course, of course. Look at this. We have my favorite thing, guys. Remember, in the Midwest, it doesn't matter. You leave your snow scraper in the car all year long. It is so hot outside right now, and this is still a staple of this interior. It's a Midwest thing, guys, I'm telling you. Flushable moist wipes, and then this. And this, I can only assume is the screen to a screen door for like a house or something like that. But I'm guessing you could also like apply this to the windows and keep the mosquitoes out of your car. I don't know, definitely an interesting find. It's like a whole roll of screen door screen. That is, uh, that's a new one for me, that's for sure. Also, you get an inside view of this massive bird poop. I'm still impressed with the bird poop, I'm sorry. You know what, no, I'm not sorry. It's impressive, that bird is healthy. Dare I say, let's look in the trunk. Let's look in the trunk. Okay, so we've got a couple of fishing rods, a basketball that's still decently inflated, a really gross washcloth, some general hay and straw, just a whole bag of play sand. If you've never lifted one of those, they are tremendously heavy. So it's good that it's in the back for traction, even though this is a front wheel drive car. Just ignore that and it's for traction. And of course we have, I don't know, is this a jacket or a blanket? We have a big puffy winter coat Again, presumably, this goes with my theory that every Midwesterner is terrified of being trapped in their car during a snowstorm. And of course, this car is no exception. The owner is very worried about it, and thus they carry around this puffy, very 90s coat, which undoubtedly would keep you warm in that scenario. But again, not gonna happen here. Only other thing we have is a wooden dowel rod. These come in handy for stuff. I guess you can spank it. Uh, so that's about it in the trunk. Let's see what's under the hood. Now, I happen to know that this car is on its second motor, which means there's really no excuse for this engine bay to be that filthy because at some point recently, everything was out of it. We got a battery that looks about 20 years older than the car. Absolutely shot bushing there. Oh, good, somebody has written, wash me on the engine cover. That's cute. Not a lot to see under here other than the normal amount of leaves and crap that builds up in the sill there. And this filter thingy is kind of broken. Oh, look, I just fixed it. Well, I didn't fix it because this clip is missing. But if anything, that's helping performance. It means it's getting a little bit of extra free-flowing air underneath there. Man, it looks like straight up singed under here. Ugh, never like to see that. 
All right, so that's a quick tour of the personal items, mostly trash, that was inside of this car. Now let's take it out for a quick drive and see if it drives like it looks. How does it drive? Well, it drives like a couch on wheels. Taking a turn here, I'm like, Ugh. This particular car is a little louder than it should be. I mean, it feels like there's either no muffler or it's been modified, but the tips look stock, so I'm not, not quite sure what's going on there. If you don't believe me, take a listen for yourself here. I've got an ABS light on, a tire pressure light on, a traction control light on, and yeah, that's about every light that you could have on other than the check engine light. Uh, applying the brakes, I've got a lot of steering wheel shimmy, which means we've got some warped rotors. And that, in concert with the ABS light, could be disastrous in the rain. All right, let's see how it does when we pull out into traffic here. All right, come on, 211 horsepower. Okay, I mean, it, it got up to the speed limit in an, in an adequate fashion. No, it's not fast, but it got out of its own way. It's not what I would call dangerous, so yeah, pretty good. Drives just like the sedan. There's nothing complicated, complex, or overwhelming about this car. And that's probably why GM sold approximately one bazillion of these. Turning the car around, I've got some, some power steering wind. It's definitely begging for help. Kind of sounds like a Chewbacca <laughs> when you're turning it, but the car's 13 years old. It's on its second motor and it's got 190,000 miles. That's about par for the course for something like this. So once you can get past the warning lights, the warped rotors, and the loud exhaust, this is a pretty good car and it's held up decently well considering its age and mileage. I imagine this car with half of the trash inside of it would be a really good buy for somebody. So there you go guys, that was a quick look around and drive of a 2007 Chevrolet Impala. It had a lot of trash inside of it. It had a lot of scuffs on the door sills. It made some noises and it had some warning lights, but it drove just like a good four-door sedan should drive. And considering these cars can be had in the low thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar range, it's actually a pretty good car for the money. These cars will last as long as you keep oil in them. You can pretty much ignore almost everything else about them. That's kind of why you still see so many of them around. They're just good, reliable cars. But that's going to do it for this video. If you like this, be sure to check out some of my other videos in this series. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. As always, my name is Elliot. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all the other normal YouTube stuff, and I will see you on the next video. Overall, for a car that was designed to be whisper quiet, this thing just is making a lot of noise. That's what the power steering pump sounds like.